Hi guys, so today I'm doing the candle making kit from Aroma, which is a supplier here in Australia. It came with six simple steps to making luxury candles. It's gorgeously set out in this box. I really thought that they've done it really well. It seems to come with everything that you really need as a maker. It comes with the medium Oxford jars, a thermometer, three 300 gram blocks of Summit's Denali wax, so this kit makes six candles, so each block would make two 150 gram candles. with a one litre pouring jug that's microwave safe. Inside the pouring jug there is also two wick holders. They look like a paddle pop stick with a hole drilled in the middle. It also came with two pegs to secure your wick holders and your wick in place. It's really important to note that if you're making candles to include a warning label just in case you give it to any family or friends. Um, the kit also came with six of those and six wick stickers for securing your wick to the inside of the jar. And here we have the HTP 83 wicks. These are a flat braided wick. We have three 30ml fragrance oils, champagne and strawberries, These are in Aroma's Lux Aroma brand. We also have Tropical Coconut. Really like this one, it's a very coastal fragrance. And Lotus Flower. This one I find is really complex and yeah, just it's warm, complex and warm. When you take the lid off, these have a little plastic seal, so make sure you have something to pierce this with. I noticed last second there's also a bamboo stirring stick. Mix your wax and fragrance together once the wax is being melted. So here I'm just lying down some craft paper. Um, this table is pretty dirty, I do a lot of pouring on here, but for the sake of this video I just wanted to give an example of how you can avoid any extra mess. If you're working in your kitchen, if you just pop some baking paper down, you can avoid a whole lot of mess. Um, while wax is able to be removed, it can be a pain, so just to Give yourself a little hand in advance, pop something down to avoid any hassle later. So here I'm just taking the HTP 83 wick and I'm going to attach a wick sticker to it. You just peel it off 
and it's kind of like double-sided tape. Once you apply it, you just stick it on the metal weight tab, push, 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 and then peel back the other side. This one, I kind of put it on off-center when I went to pop it in. It. I hadn't realized, so I just tried to pick it off and recenter it. They're kind of painful once they're on there. They're kind of stuck on there. Um, but yeah, so I just popped it straight in the middle. Try and line it up in the center as best as you can. They've got some funky um, wick centering devices out there, and I'm so proud of my friend Myrna, who owns Quickly. She's currently developing a wick centering device here in Australia. That should be available soon. Go check out Quick Wicks. Now I'm just going to pop this paddle pop stick. I'm going to call it that, not a wick holder. Paddle pop stick over the wick and peg. I tried putting it in the hole that's recommended but I found that I couldn't really get the tension that I liked on there um, and I think I ended up moving it to just get a little bit of extra hold. See how I go with this one, I think I did better the second time. Peel, peel back. push down to make sure it's nice and secure. Ordinarily I would clean out the glass before I do this but I, for the sake of the video on being a beginner so to speak um, I wanted to make it as realistic as possible. Um, I find that sometimes if you have a, a jar that you've ordered like large quantities of sometimes dust can get built up in the bottom of these jars and wicks won't like to stick and you'll find them coming out right as you pour hot wax in. So it's good to give your jars a clean up with some alcohol. Now here's the Denali Wax by Summit. We're going to pop it in the microwave safe plastic jar. Plastic jug, sorry. At this point I could have broken it down into small pieces help it melt a little bit quicker but I decided against it again for the sake of the video um, to just see how long it would take just as it is in the microwave. So right now we're going to well, melt the wax and I'm not going to lie, popping it in the microwave really actually freaked me out a little bit as someone that's used only double boiler. This made me a little bit nervous. So I just noticed when looking at the instruction sheet that they'd positioned theirs slightly differently. So I went ahead and rearranged mine to kind of imitate theirs. And I also realized that I'd forgotten to pop on my warning labels. So I'm just adding them here. So I skipped ahead a little bit here, and the wax is all melted. My camera played a little trick on me. Um, came back a couple of times to show you the wax at various stages. I did it at two minutes, and it hadn't completely melted, so I did it for another two minutes. And I found that it was well and truly done. Now, the kit does come with a thermometer. While I could have taken this opportunity to check the temperatures for the wax on the website and the fragrance oils on the website, like what they like to work at, I didn't for the sake of being a beginner. 
um, but out of curiosity I did want to check the temperature that the wax was at and this thermometer was giving me a reading of 75 degrees Celsius. I didn't go ahead and stick my finger in there to test if that's what it was but it did feel quite hot. Um, as I said I'm work used to working with the double boiler so I work normally with a big aluminium pot. Um, and I feel like that holding that that's been in hot water was a different experience to plastic. So I'm not 100% sure how accurate this thermometer was or not. I'm hoping it was fairly good. Now, I missed being able to film putting the fragrance oil in, but I did just pour it in quite um, smoothly. And then I gave it a good little stir. It doesn't tell you how long you should stir for, but ordinarily I would stir fragrance oil for approximately two minutes. I wasn't sure on like the fill capacity for these vessels, so I just went ahead and filled to where I thought it would be. So when I went to pour the second one, I filled it a little bit short, but then I managed to figure it out going with the next one, so I kind of divvied it up more equally with the next candles that I made, but you can see here, it's just a little bit short. Now I've given this jar a wax, keep saying jar, I've given this jar a wipe out. It's really important that you don't wash melted wax down the sink because um, it can cause blockages and stuff when the temperature cools, it can block your pipes. So I'm popping on my warning labels beforehand this time. And because this kit only came with the two paddle pop sticks and pegs, I realised I was going to have an issue going on to make the next four candles. Um, so I decided to just pull out some of my own and set these jars up because I just couldn't wait to do the other four. I had to do all six in one video. So again, I'm just sticking all the stickums onto the wicks. And again, just making sure we push those wicks down nice and firm on the bottom of the jars. So I think all in all this kit does seem to be a fairly all-inclusive kit as far as if someone's wanting to start out, um, there just are a little bit just there's a few little roadblocks. 
well mainly just the one, the one word block, which is the only being able to do two at a time if you don't have any other equipment. Um, all the other things I think are just little things that I've picked up on as someone that's been doing this for a while. As far as temperature range and stuff, it's, it's mainly just the practical side, it's not looking at the, um, the you know, numbers specifically. So, for example, usually you would weigh out your fragrance oil to your grams, um, your fragrance oil to a specific gram weight depending on the fragrance load you decided on for your wax and base it off the wax as grams. Um, but here it just gives you 30 mils to use between two candles. So 30 mils to 300 grams of wax, but it's not necessarily 30 grams of fragrance oil, it's 30 mils and that's volume, not weight. So it gets a little bit tricky there, but this is where um, experience comes into it. But as like a little hobby, doing something fun, little craft thing to do with kids or friends, this is a great little entry level kit. And you're able to purchase refills as well. So here I am testing the, um, I'm testing the temperature again. And again, it got to around 75 degrees. This time I was a bit rougher with the fragrance. This is the Lotus Flower, I believe. It was quite a dark colour in wax. And now that the candles have actually um, set, they are a more yellowy colour. coconut and the champagne and strawberry. And I stirred this time, I think I gave it a little bit longer this time and put in a little bit more love with the stirring. And I think I fast forward here a little bit so you don't get sick of it in a sec. There we go. You can see there I've got a few bubbles on the side of the pouring jug. Normally I would give the jug a little bit of a tap on the bench, a bit like a barista with the fluffed up steamed milk, um, just to get rid of any extra air bubbles. But I didn't hear. And I divided the wax up a bit better this time. And then I gave it a wipe out. So wipe your jugs out with some paper towel. Give it a good wipe out. And I got these ones there. But that's cool. You can see there that the other ones have cooled fairly quickly. Although there, there's a little bit of footage that I've cut out there so it has been a bit more time than what you've seen here in the video. But they definitely did start to cook quite well. Put the other one in the microwave. I think this time I just went straight for the four, four minutes. champagne and strawberries for the last two.
hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, I had fun working with the HGP wicks. I've never worked with them before. I just thought it's a nice opportunity for me to experiment with different products, different size vessels. Never used the Oxford gels before, so um, this was definitely a fun little one. And the other thing is, like, if you're looking to change up the skills, you know, even if you've been an experienced maker, but you haven't worked with Denali, or you haven't worked with HGP, or you haven't worked with the medium Oxford, this is a good opportunity to experiment, I guess. Um, and so this is a part one video. I will be doing a part two where we actually test the candles we made. Um, but yeah, so I hope that this has been helpful to you. I'm curious to see how these burn with the HGP 83 in the medium Oxford with Denali wax. And I'll be documenting this for you know my own sake and I hope that you get something out of it too. I feel like the cold throw on them is fairly nice, looking back. The coconut's a little bit soft, um, but the lotus and the champagne and strawberries are all really delicious so far. It's only been a day, so I'm going to give them at least a week before I come back and do the part two. Um, I've just got to decide which kit I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to do all Australian candle making kit. It's their milk jar kit. But you'll be able to see that on my Instagram at the candle making mama. But yeah, if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see, shoot me a message on Instagram. I'll try to make it happen. And this is how they turned out once they'd cooled.